Come on in. Welcome to Idled Out, where we talk all things Survivor. My name is Luke, and today we're talking about the lost players of Survivor. Players who were cast on the show, but who never actually played. Whether they dropped out, were dropped, or failed medical at the last second, there have been a handful of players that we know of and likely more that we don't, who were 100% playing Survivor. Until they weren't. So today, I thought it would be fun to go into Survivor history to look at the players who never were, and those who replaced them. I've long been fascinated by behind-the-scenes stuff like this, but it was ETH Animal's recent video on Lost Big Brother players that finally pushed me over the edge on making this one. Go watch that if you want to know all about the Big Brother players who never were. The link is in the description. I'll be going chronologically and only covering people who were cast on but never played Survivor at all. So last minute cuts from all-star seasons won't be included. And I'm only going to talk about players whose names and identities we actually know, with two small exceptions at the start and end of the video. All that said, let's dig in to the lost players of Survivor history. I'm going to start with a woman we know a little about, but not who she is or what she looks like. The mystery woman that Tina replaced in Survivor Australia. Tina, the eventual winner of Australia, and a three-time player, was actually an alternate for Australia. Up until pretty late in pre-production, the original plan for Survivor Australia's opening was insane. As we saw on the show, the cast was flown into the Australian outback via plane, but originally they were supposed to skydive out of it. The Survivor Australia players all had to go through jump school, and they were all originally intended to parachute into the game. Mark Burnett was seemingly trying to kill this cast, which in hindsight, not the worst idea he's ever had. The cast was nervous, but on board except for one person, a woman often referred to as Maureen, though I don't think the name's ever actually been confirmed, who dropped out of the game two weeks before it was set to start because she didn't want to skydive in, which if she just would have held out a little longer, she wouldn't have had to anyway, as the cooler, more liability-minded heads at CBS Legal ultimately prevailed. The rest is history. Tina was called in to replace her, Burnett suffered a momentary lapse in insanity and the skydive stunt was cancelled, Tina won the game, and Mystery Maureen was probably mad forever. The next would-be survivor that we know about is easily the most famous in survivor lore, Melissa McNulty, the only survivor never was that the show actually acknowledged on air. The fear of the unknown is so strong that one survivor quit just moments before being set adrift miles from shore. There are official cast photos of Melissa, there are photos of her with the cast, and there are even post-game interviews with her where she explains what happened. Five hours before the game was set to begin, Melissa began suffering a series of debilitating panic attacks and she chose to leave the game just before it started due to her anxiety. Given the late hour of her leaving the game, there was no way to get an alternate on site on time, and so the executive decision was made to start the game with an unprecedented 19 players and restructure the first episode on the fly. All of the footage of Melissa's pre-game interviews did exist at one point, but to my knowledge is now lost, but there are transcripts of some of it. Here's my favorite part, quote, I'm single, I'm out here to have a good time. If you don't think I'll use these to my advantage, pointing to her breasts, you're probably in the wrong game too. I've got a head, but I've also got these too. You've gotta love this weird period in Survivor's lifespan. The idea of a new era player talking like that is genuinely unfathomable. In the end, given her what might have been factor, Melissa ironically became more of a survivor legend outside of the game than she likely would have been in it. So maybe it's for the best that she dropped out last minute. And just speaking as a viewer, I'm also thankful. They seriously expected us to be able to tell her and Jessica apart. 
I'm a professional survivor watcher, and I can barely tell the difference. The next forgotten survivor is Craig St. Amour, who was cast on but did not play on Survivor, Blood vs. Water. Due to his high blood pressure, Craig failed medical on site during Blood vs. Water, and he and his daughter RC from Survivor Philippines were forced to leave the game last minute. Down a male-female pairing at the last second, Survivor called up Candace and John, and she heroically volunteered them as last second alternates. This is why Candace is banished to exile in the day one vote. The rest of this cast had pre-gamed for months, and she was not in on it. We don't know a ton about Craig, but we can still thank him. Not only did he inadvertently cause us to see Candace get voted out on day one, but he also spared us another season of RC. A much less confirmed Blood vs. Water player is Todd Robertson, Troyzan's brother, who was also cast on Blood vs. Water, allegedly. Personally, I find Troyzan a bit of an unreliable narrator when it comes to his returnee chances, but this is still worth a mention. In a Game Changers era interview, Troyzan said that he and his brother were nearly on Blood vs. Water before getting the axe late in the process. Quote, with Blood vs. Water, I was a week away from playing it with my brother Todd. I was in. We sent our clothes in. Once you send your clothes in, you're in. Then they called me and, you gotta be kidding me, someone else from One World got picked. And it was going to be four from my season. You're not on Survivor until you're on the beach, and I think the difficulty of casting Blood vs. Water means there's a more fluid casting process than usual. So I'd be surprised if Troyzan and Toddzan were the only ones who sent in clothes but didn't make the cut. Still, unlike Troyzan's Game Changers game, it's still noteworthy and worth bringing up. Speaking of Blood vs. Water, let's go to another of the more well-known Survivor almost wars, Du Kim, who was cast on Survivor San Juan del Sur with her sister So, but had to drop last second for medical reasons. This is why San Juan del Sur has a gender imbalance of 10 men and 8 women. Du was pulled so late in the process that there was no female-female set of alternates to replace her and So. Thankfully, So would get a chance to play Survivor the next season, where she was cast as a white-collar player on the career-divided Survivor Worlds Apart, uh, and she was quickly laid off. True to their namesake, the White Collars underwent quite the corporate restructuring right up until the last minute, as confirmed by Tyler Fredrickson on Reddit and backed up by Max Dawson, former NFL wide receiver and then corporate CEO Willie Galt was originally cast as a White Collar, but dropped out for unknown reasons shortly before filming began. As Tyler explained, I was actually cast as a no-caller until the day before flying out. Willie Galt was a white-caller but couldn't make the trip. They cast Will in his place who had pretty much never seen an episode. I was bumped over to white-caller and had to look at genitalia for two weeks. I blame Will. Now, there's a lot to take in here. They really loved their pro sports players in this era. This would have been like the sixth season in a row with one. Also, Tyler as a no-caller is really interesting. Is that why he's in this horrible picnic table shirt? It's just the only yellow shirt they could find on such short notice? And perhaps most surprisingly, Will hadn't seen Survivor? That's wild. He was so good at it. Our next Survivor Almost Was is someone you might be familiar with, Jared Fields who was cast on Survivor David vs. Goliath, dropped out at the last minute, and who later played on Big Brother 25. As the son of Survivor legend Sari Fields, Jared was going to be on the Goliath tribe, but his last second dropout resulted in Davey, who was originally slated to appear on Survivor Edge of Extinction, getting called at home shortly before the season was set to start, and asked if he could get on a plane right now. With a Goliath slot now vacant, Alec was upgraded from David to Goliath. Davy took his slot on the David tribe, and fans long wondered how the son of the best to never win on Survivor 
would fare on a reality competition show, a question which was finally answered in Big Brother 25. The answer? Uh, well, let's just say I didn't have Zach Wartenberger's little brother being the better BB-25 Survivor Nepo baby on my bingo card. The next Survivor Almost Was is someone who probably dodged a bullet, a man named Brooke Burgess, who says he was cast on Survivor Island of the Idols before getting dropped in his podcast, Buddha and the Shit. Brooke goes through every part of his Survivor journey, from auditioning all the way through the casting process, giving in-depth details on how casting worked pre-COVID. Per Brooke, he was cast on Island of the Idols in what he says he was told was the original format, Americans versus Canadians. But he was later cut when the theme was dissolved and changed, with Survivor opting to keep Tom fucking Laidlaw as the first and only Canadian representation for some reason. Now, I suppose there's a small chance of Brooke is a crazy person and made all this up, but you can see his casting video on YouTube and everything he says in his podcast rings true to me and it has an incredible amount of detail. So personally, I'm inclined to believe Brooke here. Even if US versus Canada was scrapped, at least the nation of Canada got some fantastic representation in the new era with some of the best and most fun players of all time to watch and also Kane. Most of you probably know that Survivor 41 underwent a casting restructuring when the season was postponed due to COVID. Zach Wartenberger has a video breaking down the original Survivor 41 cast, a video which I consider essential Survivor YouTube viewing. But there's one name not on his list that was later revealed in a Rob Has a Podcast interview with Squid Game The Challenge players Trey and Leanne Wilcox Plutnicki, Jimmy Kelleher, a 62-year-old gardening enthusiast from Boston. On Squid Game, Jimmy revealed to some of the other players that he was one of the original pre-COVID Survivor 41 castaways. Jimmy's a longtime applicant to Survivor, a huge reality TV fan, a massive personality if his social media is anything to go by, and a great cast photo haver. Who knows why Jimmy never got his chance at Survivor when most of the pre-COVID 41 cast has gotten their turn over the years. But I would guess that Jimmy K's survivorship has unfortunately sailed after his turn as number 262 on Squid Game, where he was eliminated in episode three. Finally, let's end this video the way we started, with an unnamed mystery player, this time the male alternate for Survivor 46. I normally wouldn't include alternates, but I think it's worth mentioning just for the huge impact this person had on the cast of 46. In the pregame press for Survivor 46, nearly every person on the cast mentions him as someone who made an impression on them, to the point that pregame interviews with the cast had to include an editor's note announcing the player they just spent a paragraph talking about isn't even on the cast. Tall with curly black hair and a long flowing black beard, this is a guy who almost everyone talked about as someone they either got good vibes from or who they were afraid of heading into the game and would target immediately. Kelly was the alternate for Survivor 43 and later got her chance in Survivor 45, so it'll be interesting to see if tall beardy guy gets his shot on a future season. If he does, it sounds like he'll be a major force in the game. I mean, this is a guy Jelinski favorably compared himself to, so you know he's gotta be good. There we have it. Every Survivor player that we know of that was cast on the show but dropped or cut at the last minute. These are just the ones known publicly. There are undoubtedly many more players who officially made the show but who were dropped or cut at the last second for one reason or another. Some went on to other reality shows, some went on to pose in an FHM Survivor spread despite not even being on the show, and some just disappeared forever and faded away into obscurity. More so. Got nothing else for ya. Which of these Survivor Almost Wars would you have liked to have seen on the show? Let me know in the comments. Until next time, don't get idled out.